All right. Hey, welcome back. Uh, Crafty Indeed. Today I'm going to talk about a book that kind of got me all going here. Uh, there's some kind of mixed reviews on this online, and I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, when I was you know, 13 years old or so, uh, my family and I, we had went out to eat at a restaurant, and it was in the parking lot of the mall the restaurant was, and headed on, on over as soon as I got done eating ran over to the mall, over to the bookstore, because as soon as everybody else was done eating, we were going to leave. I didn't have a lot of time, but I quickly scoured the shelf and kind of picked up something real quick here and ran out the door. I didn't really even know what I was grabbing for sure, but what I ended up grabbing was the Greyhawk Saga of Old City by Gary Gygax. Now, this was my first introduction to Greyhawk, actually. Before then, what little I had played before then, um, it was, as far as I know, just a homebrew type world. It could have been Greyhawk, for all I know. But it was pretty much just a homebrew world. But this story in the book, um, Saga of Old City by Gary Gygax, was kind of the story that really helped shape how Dungeons & Dragons was supposed to work. In, to me, at least. Um, and I know at the verse technical issues, there's variety of issues in the writing and so forth. I'm not going to get into. I don't care. Uh, I'm just talking about myself from when I was 13 years old, picking up this book and then reading it in the car, going on a long car trip after that restaurant. So I visit cousins or something. And I read a ton of this book in the car on the way there. And it was just like a very an exciting type of thing. I mean, it starts out with the word shit eater. I mean, I never even thought that a book could start out with a swear word. I mean, I hadn't been read very many books probably that even contained a swear word. And uh, there it is. And the... Um, not the very first word, but the uh, very first page right up there. So... And I was just kind of like, wow, that's uh, that's kind of a crazy thing, right? And so I read through it. It was very, to, to me, a very exciting um, uh, story, of course. It was, you know, very episodic. Uh, it was kind of evident he was going through all the various adventures. And, you know, just like any Dungeons & Dragons character would. Except for me at that time, it was more of just, you know, it's very exciting, like a bunch of short stories strung together with one overarching story. It's kind of what it is. But, uh, and the end of it, of course, sets up the next book, um, Artifact of Evil, which then, in turn, um, launches an entire series of books, um, all of which I have read and enjoyed thoroughly many, many, many times. Although I do have to say I wasn't real thrilled with the ending. But, you know, what do you do after everything that uh, Gord the Rogue went through by that time? You know, it's kind of like, you know, I don't know how else he'd ended. So in that respect, it was fine. And I didn't have a lot of context either for some of that because I hadn't like, read all the adventures that kind of uh, pieced in and out like i had missed until just recently um dungeon uh or i'm sorry dragon magazine 100 had a short story in there that apparently came out just before saga of old city released that talked about after saga of old city so you know i, I kind of missed a lot of that stuff too so every once in a while i stumble across something and go hey i just you know found a new piece of the uh, story that I hadn't even known existed before. Uh, there are other stories in this, in, in this Greyhawk series line with the same Greyhawk cover by Rose Estes. Um, they're not as... I mean, they're fine stories. They're not part of the Gord stories. Um, but otherwise, they're fine stories. I have hardly read them, though, because, like I said, they're not part of the gourd story but um but yeah you can pick these up to you these you can actually find pretty cheap sometimes these here are a lot harder to find um inexpensively uh better best looking at like you know book sales or something like that um online they're insanely priced but 
but uh, yeah um very exciting very cool uh um see there is sea of death which kind of reintroduces Gord the Rogue, in case you missed the first two books. Then there's Knight Errant and City of Hawks. Uh, Dance of Demons, and I keep getting these off camera. Dance of Demons, because I keep going the wrong direction. And then finally, Come Endless Darkness. And I think that's the right order, although I could have one flipped around. It's... Um, been a little bit since I've read the entire series um, in order. But, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting. Um, and how in the end of, like, Saga of Old City, there's a bunch of D&D uh, &D game terms, too, that uh, I had actually seen kind of for the first time um, in, their, in the afterword there, where uh, he kind of gives Gord stats a little bit, how he starts, how he finishes in the book. He goes ahead and talks about the various uh, magic items in the book, like the cat's eye ring, um, some of the other characters, Curly Greenleaf, Geller the Bard, Chert the Barbarian. Curly Greenleaf was um, actually one of Gary Gygax's own D&D characters, he says, here in the book. And the Rogue's Gallery, which also has uh, um, Gary Gygax uh, characters in it. Although I understand, according to... Um, Ernie Gygax, he posted actually on a social media post not too long ago that uh, some of those aren't exact and that there was maybe some uh, exaggerations or changes that were made when the when this book was create, was printed compared to how the character was were actually played like Big B. But, and I have no reason to doubt that. So, but anyway, those that would have been another source for uh, those characters, but I kind of digress there. Uh, but yeah, it's just kind of neat how it kind of goes through there and tells about the various coins and so forth um, and the various experiences there. So, but yeah, I mean, it's just an overarching story. He starts out as a kind of a beggar kid and he gains skills and abilities and he goes back and he gets revenge on those who were so cruel to him, you know, when he was younger. Uh, and then I kind of fix up here with more of the big ca uh, campaign type thing. He's got the artifact of evil they pick up at the end of this story when they defeat a demon. And then they kind of go through just Ayuz comes into it and uh, just all kinds of uh, a lot of the characters that uh, if you've played a lot, a lot of the adventures, you'd recognize if you were kind of read through some of the uh, other source material you'd recognize. So, um, but like I said, there are some mixed reviews. Um, so because before I actually recorded this, I wanted to see what other people were saying about it because it's been a long time, and you know, and a lot of people do point out the two dimensionality, and there's um, of these female characters. And that's very true uh, because definitely Gord, the rogue there, the acrobat thief, acrobat is definitely the. Uh, very focused on that character he's definitely the hero he's doing all those heroic things but it's not any different than if you read like conan or or uh, uh the any of those types of books like that the inspiration material that i would think that he would probably be drawing upon at least subconsciously it's all kind of the same stuff in the genre so and is it historically accurate of course not it's a it's a fantasy it's not reality so but yeah that's uh i just wanted to kind of uh give a quick uh review share of these in really cool books i mean and they definitely help for my um gaming experience and really more than that even i mean finding this book and reading it was kind of almost a change changed a lot of things for how i kind of did a lot of things so but yeah, uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.